Hello and welcome to the Engineer's House channel. In the first part of this video, we talked about the hydrostatic force and the center of pressure, but our analyses were limited to flat plates. Now we are going to analyze curved surfaces. But there is a problem with these curved surfaces. They have complicated areas, so their centroids are not easily obtained. But you don't need to worry about that because I am going to show you an easy way in which all you have to do is to find out the horizontal and vertical components of FR separately and then add them together. This is what I mean. Okay, but again you might ask, how do we calculate the horizontal and vertical components? Well, this is done by considering a liquid block and then drawing a three-body diagram. Okay, let's do it together and see how they are obtained. Let me erase this one. The liquid block which I'm going to choose is the portion here. In dynamics, we learned that the free body diagram is a diagram that shows the forces applied to an object. And here, our object is our liquid block. The good thing about this liquid block is that we don't need to work with this curved surface and we have the vertical and horizontal projections of it. So instead of finding the centroid of this curved surface, we can find the centroids of this vertical and horizontal surfaces and this is going to be much easier. Okay, let's see what forces are applied to this liquid block. On the right side of our block, we have the horizontal hydrostatic force distribution which starts at a non-zero magnitude and it gets larger. In the previous video, we learned that the hydrostatic force, I mean the resultant hydrostatic force, is applied to the center of pressure, which in this case, it is somewhere near the bottom. Always remember that the center of pressure is the geometric center of our force distribution, which is the portion here. And the geometric center of this distribution is obviously the point here. On the top of our liquid block, we have a simple rectangular distribution since the depth is fixed. The resultant hydrostatic force in the vertical direction is excited to the middle of this distribution. But we are not done yet. The weight is also applied, which is always directed vertically. Okay. In the x direction, we have Fh, that means the horizontal force, uh, which is equal to Fx. Don't forget that by Fx, I mean the horizontal component of Fr. And then, in the y direction, we have Fv, which means vertical force, and is equal to Fy plus or minus W. Be careful about the sign here because sometimes Fy and W are in the opposite direction, so we need to be careful about the sign here. Okay, we have Fb, we have Fh, then Fr is equal to Fv squared plus Fh squared, like this. Okay, this is much easier than analyzing the curved surface here, but Let's solve an example together to understand it much better. In this example, we have a quarter circle gate which is hinged at point C and we are going to find the force P required to hold this gate. Well, the weight of the gate is negligible. That means that when we want to consider the weight in our liquid block, we just have to put the weight of the water inside the liquid block since the weight of the gate is negligible. Okay, uh, the first step is to find and choose a liquid block and then draw its free body diagram to obtain the hydrostatic force. And when we have the hydrostatic force, we can solve our problem statically and find out the magnitude of force P. Okay, this is a two-dimensional view of this gate and the liquid block, which I'm going to choose, is this one. It's a quarter circle. 
we know that the weight is applied in the y direction and an important point that we need to be careful about is the atmospheric pressure actually the atmospheric pressure can be ignored in this special case if you remember my explanations in the previous video i mentioned that in many applications the atmospheric pressure is ignored because it acts on both sides of an object here the pressure of atmosphere acts on both sides so the effects will cancel each other out then we can easily ignore it if we ignore the atmospheric pressure at the free surface there is no pressure so there is no force then the horizontal hydrostatic force distribution starts from zero at the free surface and it gets larger as it gets deeper so we're going to have a triangular hydrostatic force distribution on the right side of our liquid block but to have a better understanding we can look at the three-dimensional view well this is a three-dimensional view of our gate which is i think a better figure in this figure our liquid block is something like this it's a volume actually and well this is the quarter circle gate and this is the point c which the gate is hinged about as i mentioned there is no atmospheric pressure at the free surface so the horizontal force distribution has a triangular form and the resultant hydrostatic force is actually applied to the center of pressure which is the geometric centroid of this force distribution we know that the geometric centroid of a triangle is located if i call this distance h then the centroid is 1 over 3 times h okay the other thing that we need to consider is actually the weight of this liquid block the weight is exerted to the center of this volume which is going to be the geometric volume center okay we don't have any hydrostatic force in the vertical direction so our equations will be simplified to in the y direction to w but what is w we know that w is the mass times the acceleration of gravity but we don't have the mass of water inside this liquid block but if you remember from physics the mass is equal to rho times the volume then instead of mg we can write rho vg but we also need to be careful about the volume here the volume is obviously the area times the depth which i call it b and by area i mean the portion here and by depth i mean the distance here okay so the area of this portion times the depth is going to give us the volume of this liquid block so we can rewrite our equation like this okay in the x direction we have fh is equal to fx since there are no other forces and we know that this is equal to p average times the area but we need to be careful about the average pressure and the area what is the area well if you remember what i just said we don't work with the curve plate here instead we work with the vertical projection of it the vertical projection of that curved plate is going to be the area here so the area that needs to be replaced in this equation is the area of this projection but what is the average pressure we have ignored the atmospheric pressure so the average pressure will reduce to rho ghc which i talked previously about it but the other thing that we need to be careful about is hc remember that hc is the distance from the free surface to the centroid of our projected area so the centroid of this projected area is actually 
the point here because we have a rectangular plate, so the centroid is obviously in the middle. And the distance from this point to the free surface is actually equal to hc. We should not make mistakes in this part because many students think that the hc distance is equal to the distance from the center of pressure to the free surface, but these are completely different because the center of pressure is the point here, which is the geometric centroid of this force distribution. It should not be mistaken with the centroid of this area, okay? So we will come to this equation finally. And the area is obviously the depth times the height of this liquid block. Now we have the horizontal hydrostatic force, which is the total hydrostatic force and the weight. So we can solve this problem statically and obtain the magnitude of force P. From statics, we remember that in order to satisfy equilibrium, we need to write the sigma F equations and the moment equations. In this case, if we write the moment equation about point C, with having the magnitudes of the weight and the hydrostatic force, we can easily obtain the force P. Okay, so this is the weight and this is the hydrostatic force. Remember that the weight is always exerted to the centroid of an object. So the centroid of this liquid block is actually the centroid of a quarter circle. If you open your static book, you can find where the centroid of a quarter circle is. Okay, so if we write the moment equation about point C, we need to know that it is equal to zero, then P times the vertical distance here, which is two actually, minus W times the horizontal distance minus FH times the vertical distance here, which is actually... If you use your calculator and solve this equation, and if you obtain the amounts of W and FR, you can find out the magnitude of force P, which is equal to... Okay, we solved this problem and we could obtain the amount of the force P. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. If you have any questions, please ask in the comments.